Welcome back for uh, another fantastic day of making things out of clay. <clears throat> so, I have been working with these particular tumblers <clears throat> for a while now. Uh, and I'm going to show today how I get my imagery onto these surfaces. Now, I used to cut all of my stencils by hand, uh, and then I invested in a Cricut Maker, and oh man, it really made a difference. I could cut a lot of them at one time, and it just made making these stencils and these templates so much easier. So what I'm gonna do today is uh, I'm gonna take this one, uh, I'm gonna actually peel it off right now, and I'm gonna apply it, it's one of my silly little characters, and I am going to apply the first coat of underglaze that I normally use. I say I'm gonna peel it, maybe it won't wanna peel today. Uh, let's see, come on and work. Hopefully cut all the way through, and we can just, there we go. Just gotta peel out the little bitty bits here. Um, parts I don't need anymore. Should have weeded them before I came out here to do this. But this is uh, the way that I'm able to get these pieces on there and create these really cool uh, anaglyphs, which is an old fashioned uh, 3D image. You're very familiar with the red and blue glasses and this is actually, this, this is the way that works. Uh, it uses, you use two different colors. You gotta use the red and the blue. And when you place them next to each other, you get this really awesome effect of making it look like the piece is uh, coming off the cup, right? It makes, makes, it makes it look 3D, it makes the image look 3D. So if you've ever been to 3D movies, the way they do it is they, they end up putting this filter uh, when they film them over the top of them. You can make these images really easily using uh, Sharpies. Um, just gotta use a red and blue Sharpie. I do, I get my, cause mine is line work. I, I'm able to create these three images. It works great for my stuff. Uh, you may want to try it out. You may not, I don't know. Uh, if you do, yeah, just, uh, well, if you learn something from it, teach somebody else is all I'm asking. I am gonna give a give away all of my all of my my imagery, my my secrets of making these pots out. So you know, share, it, right? Uh, so yeah, this is this takes a lot of. It's the only thing that you gotta do is you do have to weed. It's called weeding the uh, little bits, the trash pieces, I guess you would say off of your or out of your stencil now like i say the cricket works wonderful for this i'm going to try and actually apply it and weed it while it's on the pot so let me bring this down just a little bit so you can see exactly how this is going to go onto here now i like to use the the uh i like to use the permanent vinyl uh, i find that the permanent vinyl works better for what I do. Um, what's really awesome about this stuff, I got a little weeding tool right here, is that it will uh, allow you to do these really cool images. Um, but you can do all kinds of things. Now, I like to push the limits of what that little Cricut machine can do. Um, with these tiny, tiny cuts and such. Uh, but it works amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna peel this guy out here. Just like so, peels right off. Um, and it does a great job. I mean, I just love it. It, it has you know, made my creating process faster. It's nice to be able to work up the image, get it refined in 
Procreate, which is the drawing tool I use, and I import it to um, the Cricut Maker program. Um, I can set it up and I can get a whole bunch on one piece of vinyl. And then I just turn it on and it cuts it. Uh, and I don't have to sit there, draw it out, and then cut it with an exacto knife. Forgive me while I pull my glasses down because uh, I'm apparently getting to that age of needing to buy focals. And that's okay. I'm gonna rock those bifocals when I get them in a couple of weeks. But, uh, maybe I should have weeded this before I put it on the piece, but there we go. Uh, again, I like to use the permanent vinyl because it sticks so well to bisqueware. I don't do much in the way on greenware. Uh, I do know that you can use Cricut cut pieces. I have I when I tried using the vinyl, it just didn't stick well, and I wanted my piece to stick well. I didn't want I didn't want glaze going underneath the edges, so I wanted to use the vinyl. Plus, it would allow me to reuse it. I know there are people that are out there using the vinyl or using the Cricut to cut uh, tissue paper or newsprint. Um, and are using stencils in that nature, which is a great way to use it also. But I can, can't not talk about how wonderful I'm able to get um, with this maker. And off and on sound you hear in there, that's my kiln heating up. I got a couple of big sculptures in the kiln, uh, trying to get them dried enough so I can then bisque fire them and come back and do layers of underglaze work and get those done. But while that's happening, I'm gonna finish out these tumblers of the fast food four horsemen. But as you can see, there it is. Starting to come out pretty well. Just got this last little bit here. This is uh, this is the king of the viruses. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. Can I steal the space to work at briefly? You are welcome to steal that space to work at briefly. Can uh, I shut your door? You can shut my door. That's my wife, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, coming in here. Sure. Uh, she doesn't know she's currently going to be on a YouTube video, but... <laughs> Everybody say hi to my wife. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. So, we're just trying to pick this little guy apart. So, we can get this done. That's the plan. So, a little bit more picking. I will tell you. If you weed it before you put it on the pot, it's a lot easier. Pull my glasses down so I can see what I'm doing again. How are you getting older? Now, bring this a little closer and you can see, put this back up there, you can see the stencil piece on there. So, first step in making the anaglyph is put the stencil in place, then utilize, I like to use the radiant red. I put my red down first and then the blue over the top. It just makes it much easier for me to get that separation so that the anaglyph works. And I use a handy dandy makeup sponge, uh, which allows me to dab the underglaze into place so that 
it doesn't get pushed underneath the stencil, giving it a clean, clean appearance, crisp, clean edge. Um, if you brush it on, you can push it up underneath the stencil and then you get fuzzy edges. And fuzziness is only really good for beards. And teddy bears. So, dab it on. And I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. And I'll come back and do a second coat, but as you can see, there it is, dabbed in place. Now it's gonna be red. We'll do a second coat on it, a little bit. Uh, and while we wait for that to dry, we can apply the stencil for the word. This particular fast food guy is gonna be salt. Oh yeah, salt. And as you see, it's much easier to weed these pieces while they're still on the plastic. As you're peeling away, you want to make sure if you cut real close that you don't tear your vinyl. Uh, if you have tiny details, you don't lose those as you're peeling it up. Sticky though. really well to press it down and as you can see because of the indentation here the vinyl bends and fits to the surface fantastic and then we come back again with the red dab it into place side to dry. Give a second coat of the red over here. Come back over. And now, about this I should be able to remove it and actually be able to reuse <clears throat> this stencil one more time as long as I don't tear it there's always a risk when you have tiny bits <clears throat> so 
Get the little pointy tool around. stuck well. Now, crisp, clean stencils. To do the anti-glyph portion, we're going to replace the stencil back on, but we're going to offset it. And that's where you have to kind of pay attention to where you're offsetting it. I usually like to go slightly to the left and up. Start in the middle. is down. place. <clears throat> Shake up the boot. Realize it's one I haven't opened yet. Can you hand me that electric blue up there? Huh? The electric blue is the one on the top. Okay. Ask your wife to get you the electric blue because a medium blue works. Electric blue is just that much more electric. Plus, it's already open. But I really do use the electric blue more so than the medium blue for this part. Take your handy dandy makeup sponge and dab away. If you don't have a makeup sponge, go into your wife's makeup drawer, steal them. Hey. Or your husband's makeup drawer, and steal them. Hey, hold up. They, they never know it's okay. Right. They, they get a whole bunch of them, you know. Don't get the used ones. So if your husband's got some makeup sponges in there, go go take them. They work great. Or if your wife or girlfriend, significant other, why not? I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now the blue is really, really heavy, thick, so don't really have to do too much in the way of a second coat, but we will, just a tiny one here to make it work. And 
that blue's in place. I don't have to wait till it dries. I can just peel it up. And now, there. If you have 3D glasses, go get them now. Go put it on. It will work. And it's not because I'm moving it, but it actually will appear 3D. So, there you go. That's how you make an anaglyph. Using underglazes on cups. We'll make something out of clay.